I want to welcome you here to Fred K. Marchman Technical College for this very special event. On behalf of our director, Mr. Rob Ages, welcome. Today, uh, we're going to have a very special person give us an author's address. And but prior to that, we want to introduce a couple uh, very important people. We appreciate everyone being here, students from Fred K. Marchman Technical College, students from across the street at Wendell Friend Technical High School, and family and friends and faculty and staff. So, uh, but we need to do uh, some introductions that uh, is very important. Uh, as always, we appreciate our support from the district office. I'd like to introduce our school board member, Ms. Megan Hardy. <laughs> then I go back up to the top of the list because this is a very special person in Chris's life. Uh, we want to introduce his uh, grandma, Annette. Yeah. Grandma, of course, is uh, accompanied by Uncle Joe. Yeah. And then we have a couple of special family members that are here with us on Zoom. That is Grandma Annette, Grandpa Tony, and Uncle Frank. Welcome. In addition to uh, writing a book is not a one-person deal, and we have a very special person here with us uh, today, a former teacher of Chris's, the cult illustrator, Mr. Patrick Stickney. In addition, we want to uh, recognize a couple uh, special teachers in Chris's life. Uh, we have Mr. Ferguson and Ms. Petrashek here. And lastly, uh, what we always talk about most important people in our life, uh, when we talk uh, for Chris, we want to give a big round of applause and welcome to his mom and his dad, Renee, and Anthony. Well, as you all know, Chris is a uh, student here at Fred K. Marshman Technical College, uh, involved in our adult education program, and we're glad to have him here as well as all of our other students because we believe in our mission that Fred K. Marchman is here for everyone and adult education has a special place here in Pasco County. So uh, on behalf of um, uh, all of the faculty, staff, and everyone here present, I'd like to introduce to you Chris. this up with a joke. This might be a bit pointless to say this thing, I'm going to tell it anyway. How does a dog stop a VCR? Ow. They press the pause button. Get it? Pause button. All right, now that that was cleared up, thank you all for coming, and I hope for all of you here, you have a great swing break next week. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Matt. I know you can't hear me, but hi. All right. So, as mentioned beforehand, publishing a book, including a self-published book, is no easy task. It's very expensive and very time-consuming, especially for books that have been around for a long time, like, say, The Magic Treehouse, if anyone knows those books. So, I would like to quickly make a speech about what's been going on while I was publishing it and who I am thinking. And after I have something else to say, well, actually a friend is saying it. And good morning. Can you still hear me? Yes. Good morning. Thank you for being here to support me. I really appreciate it. This day would not have been possible if it weren't for the support and kindness of Marchman Technical College. I would especially like to thank my director, Mr. Ages, my assistant director, Mr. Roshu, who happens to be really funny, and to me, he will always be 62. <laughs> Ms. Leary, our other assistant director, Ms. Jarvis, our school's bookkeeper, Chef Webb for making the awesome puzzle piece cookies, Mr. Rob Matea, who is our cinema 
production teacher, and he made the video tape of me doing a read-aloud of my book, which is now available on YouTube. Uh, Mr. Andrew Turner, the ABE Layason, Mr. Bob Armstrong, my assistant teacher, Enrique Santana Jr., who helped film the aforementioned video, Ward Jenkins, the plant manager, and a huge thank you to Miss Kim Taylor, my teacher, and Miss Andy Walker, who runs the Early Child Apprentice Program. Both were so excited to hear that my book was published and worked countless hours to make today possible. Getting to this moment today has been quite a journey. It started three years ago when I was getting ready to graduate high school. As a graduation project, I had to learn about a career that I would want to pursue in the future. I always had an interest in making cartoons, voice acting, drawing, and creating my own storylines. As a child, I spent a great deal of time pretend playing because it was a safe world for me. And let's face it, many of you probably did that as well. I'm, in, I'm sure many of you know I have autism, Asperger's syndrome, and there is no cure. It hasn't always been easy to be me. It's been hard to make friends with people my age because they don't share the same interests. Sometimes I feel as if I am caught between two worlds, and it's not easy to live in both of them. So for my senior project, I was inspired to write a children's book that brought together my talent to tell stories and bring to life the characters I see in my mind. It was important to me to create a character that might think that they have a disability or flaw, but in reality, it's truly what makes them exceptional. I wanted the main character to be strong and persevere, to learn that we should value ourselves no matter what circumstances life gives us. We're all important and need to be tolerant of one another. My first book, Dottie Spreckles, is an example of this. In addition to the people I thanked earlier, the teachers I had in the past helped me to get to this point today as well as my family and friends that I've made. I was very fortunate to go to Ritchie Elementary from pre-K to fifth grade, and there I had some great teachers who I will remember today because they accepted me for me. Examples being Miss Tony Fry, Miss Angie Marina, Miss Karen Dietz, and Charlie McEwen, Jeff Carraway, and Wendy Krug, three teachers I've kept in touch with for a long time. My oldest friend I've kept in touch with since kindergarten is my longtime friend, Whitney Hill. I was also lucky to go to Millennium Academy thanks to Ms. Eckblad, the principal, who accepted me into the school. I was a student there from middle school until I graduated, and this is where my love for pretending and art came together. One teacher, Mr. Sullivan, introduced me to cartooning and animation and believed that I could be an animator as well. In my book dedication, I mentioned Mr. Ferguson and Mr. Stigney because both supported me and were my teachers each year that I was at Millennium. Mr. Patrick Stigney, my co-illustrator of this book, waited to retire until the day I graduated high school. He wanted to see me through. We left Millennium together. After he retired, Mr. Stigney gave up his time, patience, and his art talent as we continued to illustrate my story, and this is how Dottie Spreckles came to be. Now, I'll quickly rapid fire this last little part. I was inspired to make this character because I saw this one cartoon where the youngest member of a team was treated as if she was not that important just because you're the youngest. So, after reworking that a little bit, that is where my book came to be. And just because you are the youngest does not mean you're not that important. And as my book's tagline, which I'll explain more about in a second goes, we're all different, let's embrace it. So, just out of curiosity, as I mentioned beforehand, my book's tagline actually comes from a friend. Well, someone you all probably don't know because it's not a real person. My book's tagline comes from a friend from a show that many of you may have heard of that I think this show has entertained a new generation since his introduction. A show that was called Bear in the Big Blue House. Who remembers that show? Yes. Well, there was one particular episode they made titled Bats Are Different Too, and Bear sings this little song about how we're all different. Noel McNeil, the puppeteer for Bear, actually says that Bear was a good influence on people with special needs and autism. And I can pretty much tell you the show has aged well. 
If you would like, would you be okay if I play the song? Do you have something to play? Yes, I have my phone. Okay. <laughs> It takes a while for him to say it, but you get the idea. an influence on a lot of people's lives, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I guess I'm done. Okay. Oh, questions, right. Okay, at this time we're going to be, uh, have uh, Chris take some questions, if anybody has a question for the author. Yes. Yet? Does anyone have a question? Any? Yes, Andrea. How many more books are you planning to make in the next year? Uh, that's something I can't really predict, but I am hoping to get another one published before this year is up. Interestingly enough, my job coach came earlier today. I don't know if she's still here, but. My book was actually published on her birthday as the face mask my mother and I are wearing both explain. That was just sheer coincidence, really. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Any other questions? Um, what's brawling? Oh, drawing. Well, maybe for a few years. I. I first kind of really got into drawing by watching this show that, well, most of you probably wouldn't remember it, but they had a segment where there was a guy on the show who coincidentally was named Chris as well, and he was drawing a lot, so I thought I could try drawing what he was drawing on screen. Yeah, it's amazing what television can teach you. 
Like I said, this is a show many of you have probably never heard of. It was called Reverend and Robert's Wonder World. And it was, as I quote, the first show a kid can ride. What inspired me? Well, like I said, it first started like when I found this one cartoon where the youngest character was mistreated just because she was the youngest. The show is probably something many of you have never heard of, and I wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't. So I thought after seeing the way this character was treated, I thought maybe I could rework it a little bit, and that's what I did, and well, I eventually wrote the story and made the drawings, but since four years ago, I only had three months to complete it in. The original way the story looked is on those, where are the boards? Behind you. I mean. Oh, uh, my mother's, apparently my mother put them away and I didn't realize. These were the original boards made when I first wrote the book. Once again, we only had four months, so that's why they, that's why they look a little different. Nope. The original title was Spotty Dotty, and I believe Spotty was the name of the dog, but people like Freckles more and like the title Dotty's Freckles more. I'm just gonna walk this up and down the aisle. Oh, okay. That, that would help. Any other questions? Any other questions? Where? Yes, April? Miss Foley is online. She knows you can't hear her, but she just wanted to say that she's very proud of you and happy that she got to hear your speech today. That was very kind of her. Anyone else? <laughs> um, hi, Miss Foley. Uh, oh. There you go. Anyone else? Anyone else have a question? Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, I don't think so. The closest we did get to seeing something like that was when the book was not printed in color the first round. Any other questions? Uh, yes, you back there. What's your name? Oh, Mr. Gunkel, right. Hey, I can't see that far. Sorry. Yes. R repeat that. Since uh, starting it as my senior project, th three years. Any other questions? Oh, yes, Mr. Stickney. When you're rich and famous, will you still live in the Fort Well, I don't know if I'll be rich and famous because the person who helped me publish the book is not rich and famous himself, but he does make some money. <laughs> Wow. Any other questions? I'll take maybe three more questions. Anyone have a question? Anyone have a question? Anyone at all? Uh, uh, yes, question? How do you uh, uh, the name of the How did you come up with the name of Dottie in the book? How did you think of the name of the book? Uh, I wasn't, well, I guess I'll come clean and say it. <laughs> I was inspired by someone else's work. It was, I guess I'll come clean and just say what the show was. It was a show called Clue Club. The way many of you have probably not ever heard of that, it aired all the way back in 76. Just out of curiosity, this will immediately come to head. By, by applause or raise of hands, who obviously knows who Scooby-Doo is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you heard of the company Hanna-Barbera? Oh, that's more than I thought. Well, you see, how much do you guys bet that the formula for Scooby-Doo is not that hard to copy? <laughs> yes, yeah, simply all you need, here's the formula. Teenagers, mystery, talking mascot, done. <laughs> well, you see, when Hanna-Barbera realized just how popular and successful the Scooby-Doo formula made them, basically what they ended up doing was copying it nearly every year that followed, and they just kept making their own rip-offs of it. 
<laughs> As I've also learned from this YouTube video, there is a difference between recycling a concept and just not knowing how to move on. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to okay. wrap up. Yes, so I think that will be where I wrap up the questions, but it was good to answer them. Thank you very much.